Those of you who are just joining us, um, hopefully you're seeing that notification come through. We're putting together two borders today from the Creative Memories blog. Um, they're borders that are from the December 15th blog post. We had some deep woods borders and um, some from the July 15th blog post that had the serene waters. And they have sketches uh, to accompany them and the directions. So we will go ahead, I think, and um, get started. Um, hold on just one second here. All right, um, I'm gonna switch over to my um, overhead camera so you guys can see what I've got going on here. I am going to be, uh, for sketch number, uh, the, uh, excuse me, border number one, um, they show it an example here with the Deep Woods collection. I am going to be using the Back to School collection. Um, it's back to school season for me, so I thought this would be a great time to go ahead and get a jump start on um, some of the photos I'm anticipating having and having some of those um, school borders made. So I'm gonna be using the Back to School collection. So this first border, when we look at it, um, there's you can see here, and if you read through the directions, they've used a chain border, the uh, photography chain uh, border maker cartridge. And then they've layered in um, some, some papers and stuff from the Deep Woods collection. They have used a laser cut border across the top. So this is actually a really quick and easy to put together um, border. You can see over here with the sketch though, when you look at this, you can easily see some substitutions. Anytime I see kind of this decorative edge at the top, I know that I can use um, one of my border maker cartridges. I can use one of my regular border punches. Anything that's an edge style punch is gonna work fantastic. It could be a chain style. Edge style is probably gonna work the best, give you the uh, best way to adhere it. Um, but if I do that edge style punch, I can punch across the top of my border and then layer on everything else on top of that edge border. So that's kind of the approach I'm going to take. Rather than following their directions where they are building this up with some strips and then they attach that laser cut border, which you definitely could do if you're working like with the sun rays for days and you wanna put those, um, the flip flops, uh, uh, laser cut border on there or any of the other laser cut borders if you want to do it just like they've done the directions just sub out the different papers um, the stickers all those components and you'll have yourself a fantastic border I am going to be using the border maker cartridge so the border maker cartridge um, to back up just a little bit when I do a border I always start for the most part I'm always going to start with my what I call my top layer what is my layer that is at the top uh, meaning what if I were to stack things. In this case, it's the photography chain. So I need to think about what am I gonna use in place of the photography chain here? That is my top layer, meaning that I've got the photography chain, that brown layer, then I have a white layer underneath that, and then there's the green bottom layer. So I need to think about what is my top layer, and I'm gonna be using the Apple's border maker cartridge. And um, I'm doing that because it's school, it's back to school. It, the Apple's Border Maker cartridge works fantastic. This was from a couple of years ago. It is now retired. Um, if you're needing one of those, you can uh, send me a message. I do have a few in my personal inventory that I can definitely send out. And I'm gonna be going ahead and I'm gonna punch those apples in cranberry cardstock. And the reason I've chosen cranberry is because I've got some papers from the back to school collection. I've got this really fun rainbow paper that I'm going to try it with. If it doesn't work across there, I'll use this as an accent and I'll uh, work with the tonal side, the yellow tonal side. I've got this blue and green paper. So let me, if I fold these all over, you can kind of see I've got all those lovely colors I'm going to be working with. The, if the green, the blue, the rainbow, and the yellow, and then the red. And I decided to go with red cardstock rather than red tonal paper. Um, from the pack because I um, want to make sure that there's no distraction in these apples, that they're just very much an apple. There's no pattern to it, it's just an apple. So I'm gonna grab my border maker cartridge and my border maker system, and I'm gonna punch one chain of the apple borders. So I'll go ahead and punch that. Okay. 
the reason I do this part first is because this layer right here, these apples are going to dictate the height, the measurements of everything else. So you're gonna to wanna to have a ruler with you. You can of course use the uh, measurements that are included in the, um, in the, the directions that I give you here, that's gonna be a great starting point. I mean, they use a border maker cartridge. I'm using a border maker cartridge in general. They're all about the same height. If you're using a different border punch, like if you're using one of our blue and white border punches, so say you wanted, um, I'm thinking like what you might want here that you would have um, anything that's taller. It's gonna start to set, you know, change your um, measurements. Or if you're using, say you're doing a sun raise for day's border or something else and you have those, um, the flip-flop shoes that are in that as a border, it's a taller border than the border maker cartridges. So establishing what this chain is, is gonna dictate how wide I make the other pieces. So that's why I'm starting with this piece. Now, for their sketch and their border, I need to come up with a background that's gonna go behind my border. So I'm thinking I'm gonna use the rainbow. And the reason I think I'm gonna use the rainbow and I think I can get away with that busier pattern behind the apples is because the apples themselves are pretty solid. It's a pretty solid border punch I don't have, I have some little holes, but for the most part, I've got very solid pieces of apple here. If I had something that was a little bit more intricate, like if I was using photography chain, where I have these little straps that are you know, connecting the uh, cameras and I have the big opening there for the lens, the camera itself might get lost in the busy pattern. But, I can always keep it in mind if I don't like the rainbow, I can flip over my piece of paper and I can use the uh, gold stars. So I think I'm gonna use my apples, or excuse me, the striped, the rainbow striped paper. Now I look at this and I see some other things. I'm not cutting this paper yet. I'm gonna just kind of play with some pieces and I don't actually start cutting pieces for my border until I kind of have everything work together. So I'm gonna use this apple, or excuse me, the striped paper for my background. And now um, they indicate using a sticker or some other thin, you can see this um, darker gray line of dots here. And typically when they have that thin strip like there, it's going to be something like a border sticker. You could um, have um, maybe one of those great length sticker strips. You could cut just a thin strip of paper. Um, anything that's real narrow. I don't think I would necessarily stack another set of apples up here. I want something narrow. So I could use my 12 inch trimmer with a decorative blade and just cut a thin strip. Um, I can take a look at the stickers. The stickers for back to school are a little bit bolder and wider. Um, I'm thinking I might use this alphabet sticker, but it's pretty wide. It's almost as wide as my apples. You can see there, it's pretty wide. I could use the pencil, it's a little bit thinner. The side-by-side um, -side kids here are definitely pretty thick. So I'll keep those in mind. But I, I definitely know I wanna use um, the dark blue tonal paper with my um, home sweet home border punch. So I'm gonna punch that right now. That is taking the place of the pine tree. So this decorative edge across the top is gonna be my home sweet home border punch the uh, border maker cartridge, it's an edge style, meaning that it stays attached to the paper. When I punch this, it's gonna stay attached. This tonal piece of paper does have a direction to it. It's got music notes on it. It's very um, faint. It's hard to see those music notes, but it's there. So I'm gonna make sure that I punch that in the right direction. And I'm punching this with the Home Sweet Home Border Maker cartridge. All right. So now I'm, and I'm not cutting anything yet. I'm leaving those attached. Remember, I am going to come back and figure out all my measurements after I have some of my pieces figured out. 
So I'm starting to look about like this, right? I've got my edge, my decorative edge, which is my here on the sketch. I've got my um, middle chain, which is the big circles in the middle. And I've got my background piece, which is this piece here, the, the white piece in here. Now, what I am going to do here is I am going to go ahead and make the decision on how um, wide I'm going to, or how tall I'm going to trim my stripe piece. Um, you'll definitely want to have your ruler available. And I want to give myself a little bit of space at the top to overlap whatever border piece I'm gonna stick along here. There's gonna be a border piece that I transition from my stripe to my houses. So I need to leave myself a little bit of space here at the top to make sure that I can overlap that. So I'm not gonna, when I put my uh, uh, apples on here, I'm not gonna center them top to bottom. I'm gonna pull them a little bit to the bottom and give myself some room. So when I go ahead and measure this, and I'm looking at about an inch and a quarter, which I actually think is this step. And step two, they say cut that piece to an inch and a quarter. And that is gonna work out really well. Your piece may be different depending on the height of whatever um, border element you're using here. So if you've got something thin, such as the masquerade, um, mass or a punch, it might be narrower. If you got something wider, if you're going to put in some birthday cakes along here or gifts or something else, it might need to be a little bit taller. So an inch and a quarter. And I'm just going to cut this with my straight trimmer. I'm not going to worry about a decorative blade here. Um, that is always something you can add wherever you see edges. If you want to use a decorative blade, you could definitely do so. With here, I've got straight lines of the rooftops of my houses, so I'm not worried about a decorative blade. All right, so there we go. We're starting to see it take shape. Okay, so you're starting to see it take shape. Something else I'm gonna start thinking about, guys, this is, I'm walking you through my thought process, which is, you're probably finding is a little chaotic. Um, I'm going to start thinking about what kind of, what am I putting this on? Like, do I have a paper in mind that I'm putting this on? When I was messing around with this, I wanted, I see, I want to show it there against the stars. I just want to see, it gives me a feel for what this could start to look like if I were to incorporate it into a page. So I'm thinking, oh, I like this. I like if I wanted to use a piece of the dark or the, the golden um, stars here, I could do so. And does this impact the color choices I make for other parts of this? I talked about maybe I could use the pencil. Well, if I'm using the golden background, the pencil might be a little bit too much yellow. Now, if I were to um, use a different color, like I'm just gonna, I have a piece of green cardstock in here. Imagine I was using a piece of tonal green paper as my background. Maybe that pencil would be perfect in there. But I am almost positive I'm going to be using something more along the yellow as my background. So I'm not going to use the pencil. Put that back on my sticker sheet. And I am, I'm certain, going to be using the handwriting the alphabet strip. All right. So what are we starting to see here? I'm starting to see that I got to shove some things down a little bit. I am not ready to cut my top and bottom pieces here, especially if I want to do one background piece and fit it all together. There's two approaches to this. I could cut myself a big swath here and build everything up and then just cut another thin strip of the blue and add it to the bottom. So I don't have to worry about my total height from top to bottom. However, if I want to have this be one solid piece, I kind of need to know how wide do I want it to be. So I'm not going to position things into place. I'm a, I am going to make one quick thing. I know my apples are going on here. I'm going to put my apples on. I need those apples to behave themselves and to hold themselves in place so I can get these measurements. 
All right, so there we go. That looks pretty good. I'm pretty confident with that positioning. So what I'll do is now I'm gonna measure, hold this in place. I'm measuring from the top of my roof, the tallest point on my border, down just past my striped paper, and it looks to be about two and three quarters inch tall. So based on the height of my border punch, if you use something different, maybe it's taller here, um, you would have a different measurement, but I'm measuring from the top to where I wanna cut, which is gonna be two and three quarters inch. And I'll go ahead and cut that. Two and three quarters inch is the measurement that I'm using from the peak of my roofs. And now I'm honestly ready to start putting those pieces together. I can start adhering everything into place. I use a lot of repositionable adhesive when I'm doing borders. Just gives me a little bit more flexibility. I should have about an eighth of an inch at the bottom. That's usually about what I like to see at the bottom, carrying that carrying the blue from the top to the bottom, just frames it nicely, balances top and bottom. Before I stick it down, I'm double checking. Yep, I like that. All right, so there is the, honestly, the completed border. It worked out so well. It's such a basic border, but it's a great place to start. This is nice combination of um, the, the different pieces here. We've got the edge border across the top. You've got a chain border here. I mean, this honestly is one of those just, you need to put a border together. It's a great sketch to start with, um, play around with it. Lots of ways that you can use it. I do need to do a little bit of cleanup with some scissors on this one edge. My cranberry cardstock is a little bit wider. Okay, so this is the base border itself, but I wanna point out a couple of details because I'm gonna tell you that I'm pretty certain, I think this was a border by Chris Lynn. I think these are both borders by her. She sneaks in some great little design things that I wanna highlight for you, uh, especially in this border. She uses, if you look um, here, you can see where she has cut apart some of the uh, cameras in a different color of cardstock or paper, and she's layered on those like a little embellishment. So I can do the same thing with my apples using our border punches as embellishments. So I have the option, I can come in with my same color apples or I grab some other colors of cardstock because maybe I wanna make them a little bit different so they stand out. So I'm gonna try punching some apples in the green cardstock. There we go. My uh, cartridge holder likes to sometimes not play nice. This I think is some cardstock from one of those old 12 by 10 by 12 packs. I don't know the color. It's just a green. Actually, no, this might be, this might've been one from an old, old cardstock buffet. One of the bonus colors. We are getting a new green. So that's gonna be coming out. That'll be really nice to have. That should be coming out sometime this fall. So there we have just a little apple. Do the same thing. This is Scarlet, I believe. If you guys remember Scarlet, just a little bit of a brighter, more of a fire truck. And then I have some pear here as well. I'm not sure the pear is gonna work only because I don't really have that color in my layout. I've got more of the um, true yellow or you know true green. And I'm not sure, even though, to be honest, we're more likely to see this color, this pear color as an apple than we are the uh, more Kelly green, but we will see. So now I have just a couple of apples there. 
and we think about what we would want for um, some sort of embellishment. So maybe we'd use a sticker that we could put on here. There's some title stickers here that are great. Um, I could come in with every day is a chance to learn. So I would pop this off with some foam squares. And sometimes I'll put the foam squares on the back. I leave the adhesive part on and that lets me move things around. I can move it around and then I can imagine if I wanna put those apples on as an accent. So I'll probably play with that a little bit more. Um, let me lift this up. So you can see, see how those apples just kind of pop in there? A little bit of a different color so they stand out against that cranberry apples but just a, um, a nice way to add some details to your border using the same punch, using those punches in just different ways. So that was definitely a, a part of this border from December 15th that I wanted to highlight. I wanted to highlight that because I thought that was really cool doing that with your um, borders. One last thing I wanna talk about because this is, um, what happens if you wanted to add this border to some paper that's a little bit more decorative or you're saying, um, I am gonna go ahead and use um, the green paper, but I've already used the blue and now you can't see, I mean, you can still kind of see them there, but what if you wanted to do something else here? Well, one of my favorite things to do is gonna either use the decorative trimmer or you can use the clouds border maker cartridge. Um, to give you, you could trim yourself another piece that would go behind here. So if Creative Memories, you know, the sketch they give you, they have like these trees up here. If they give you something here and you're like, I just need something a little bit behind this, you can add another layer behind this. They would give you those, um, the Cloud Border Maker cartridge is a great one. Using the decorative trimmer is a great option as well. That just gives you a little bit of something else behind those houses to give them that background. Now you'd be, it's all set to be able to add them to whatever um, design or paper. You can come back in with the blue. Imagine that we have gone in with that decorative trimmer. Let me just do it here real quick so you guys can see. You are gonna wanna have your decorative trimmer available for the next set of borders. So I've already got mine out. can imagine coming in here just like that. So adding additional layers, bringing it, so I could still bring in that yellow, but maybe I wanted to use the blue as the actual background for my photos because I decided that I wanted a little bit of a darker color as compared to the lighter yellow. So those are things to keep in mind. You can always put this together, stash it away for when you're ready for your project, knowing that you have those options that you can add if you need to. All right, so that was the uh, December 15th sketch for the uh, Deep Woods border. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. And if you make a, a border based on the sketch, I would love to see it. So definitely be sure to share that. Next up, we're going to be using the decorative trimmer. It's one of my favorite tools. I hope you guys have one. It's been around forever from Creative Memories. And before we get started with the decorative trimmer um, or this, this border, a real quick tip with the decorative trimmer. And if you've been to a power hour or anything else where I've used the decorative trimmer, I always talk about centering. That is a huge thing for me. It's a huge, um, it, it's an important part of this sketch as well, because we want to make sure when we are cutting our, um, the the waves here or the swells with our decorative trimmer that we are keeping things even that we're, we're not having our swell edges be off kilter a little bit so centering is really important and when i talk about centering i'm going to grab a piece of paper for my um border today i'm going to be using the lullaby lane collection so one of the pieces i'm using is this wood tone when i talk about centering the 12 the decorative trimmer 
the trimmer bed, which is the part that has the grid on it, is more than 12 inches tall. It's actually 12 and a half inches tall. However, our decorative edges are centered on that 12 and a half inches. So if I were to start, put my top of my paper up here at the top or flush here at the bottom, I'm gonna be off by about a half an inch. So what I've done is I've used a Sharpie and I've marked the middle. And how you mark the middle is you're gonna mark, put a line with your Sharpie or other permanent type of um, marking, one grid line in, These all these grids are a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna come one grid line in from the top and one grid line in from the bottom. I'll raise this up and you can see, see that blue line I have there? That's telling me, that's where I'm gonna line my paper up. You can actually see how I've extended that clear over. That's where I line my paper up. Middle is actually right here. Very faintly, I can see the six inch mark, but the middle is actually right here. And you'll see that kind of lines up with this notch that's present on the swell. That is actually the middle of the swell and the wavy edges. And then at the bottom, you can see I've made another line, one notch, one set of squares up. So that's important when we're doing this particular border. The other part is real quick terminology. The swell edge has the more gentle wave. And then we have the wavy edge, which is more wavy. So for this layout or for this border, we're using the swell edge. For other um, things where you may need to use the wavy edge. So if you hear somebody talking about the swell versus the wavy, you know the swell is more of just the gentle wave and the wavy is the wavy edge. All right. So once again, um, you can see here, if we look at our elements, we've got some border pieces are the border um, border elements, which when I refer to a border element, I'm talking you could uh, use a border maker cartridge, you can use a border punch, you can use a sticker, you can use a laser cut border, um, various ways to get border elements. So um, the border elements here, they show two different ones and they um, really what they're wanting is just some contrast between a back kind of a background border and a front border. And they've done it by using the same border punch and punching a background in the, the blue and then coming in with that same butt punch where they've used the friendly fish and they've punched it in the gold or the orange paper from the Serene Waters collection. I am using Lullaby Lane. And so I'm making a baby themed one. I was going to use jammies, which is currently available from Creative Memories. This is cute little jammies, also known as onesies, um, but the jammies. However, as I got going on things, um, jammies wasn't quite, actually, I'll just tell you, I was going to mix and match. And then I got using moon and stars and I just kind of kept using moon and stars. So this would look really cute with jammies. If you're doing something with Lullaby Lane, but I'm going to be using moon and stars partially because I wanted to use I have this, this ivory plaid paper that I punched with moon and stars and I don't have another sheet of it. And I don't have any, I need to order another pack of the paper. So I couldn't punch another one. So I'm going to be using moon and stars, but I think jammies would work really well. So I'm using moon and stars. That's my long story short there. I'm using moon and stars, even though it's retired. Sorry about that. But I know y'all have retired punches and you want to use them. So always feel free to you know use what works. So I have punched one of the, um, the moon and stars in this kind of ivory plaid. And I am going to be um, using um, a couple of different papers. Instead of doing like the ivory with two of these blue behind it, I'm actually going to use, I want to incorporate some more colors. So I'm going to be using this kind of minty green color. The background piece, I need it to be something subtle. I know I needed the background to be subtle. So that's what I'm using the woods. So when I say background to this, I mean the, the portion that these pieces are set upon. So my my punched pieces are going to sit on my swell cut wooden piece here. So before we go too much further, I am going to go ahead and punch these two additional pieces. 
I've already punched one. I'm gonna punch both of these colors in the moon and stars. Lullaby Lane is great because you can mix and match if you needed this to be a little bit more girly, a little more gender neutral, you just change up your colors. And so there's my blue, and then I need this green. All right, so we've got those three pieces, the three pieces, and they're just gonna layer on as such. I'm gonna use the blue and the green kind of as a back, a little bit of a background, and then the ivory, which stands out a little bit more, will be layered on top. So it's hard to maybe see on this, this wood, this my tabletop, but as we build it, we'll go. Now, once again, we are stuck in the whole thing is, we don't know the sizes. They give us some measurements here, but it's very, when the blog borders, um, or as like all the blog projects, they're very specific in terms of measurements to what they've created. So the very, if you wanna create this border, you're gonna follow the blog directions. I'm using this sketch more as an inspiration. I love this border, I think it's fantastic. I, I love the elements. It's got the decorative trimmer in there. I really just love the look of it, but I like this sketch. I want to try it, you know, making something else based on the sketch. So I've got my border elements cut here. They're punched. So now what I need to do is I need to figure out how tall my swell cut piece is going to be because I've got to somehow get my border pieces here to fit in a swell element. So I'm not going to cut my swell piece all at once. I'm gonna cut one edge, all right? Just cutting one edge right now. Looking at how the swell edge lines up in here, we're doing a mirror cut. And so when I feed this piece in, I need to, I'm, long story short, I need to feed it from the right towards the left. Um, I wish I could explain it better. Um, it's one of those things that you just kind of have to look and see maybe use some, um, as you're getting to know your decorative trimmer, if you're not super familiar with it, I recommend using some scrap paper to make some cuts. Just trust me on that. You'll be a lot happier. It can be a little bit of a learning curve on this as you're getting to know your decorative trimmer, getting to know the sides when you cut things. Um, you just kind of learn. I know that I need to have it narrower at the top. Imagine looking here, see we're narrower at the top. We're wider, but we're narrower at the top. That means I need to have my narrow piece right here. So I'm gonna cut this side first. I've centered it. And I'm only, I've lined up along an edge in here and I don't, I just wanna make sure that I've cleared, that I'm cutting all along here. Um, so I'm only cutting off a little bit. Just a thin strip here. You can see this is just a piece of trash. But there's what I needed. All right. So these will go on as such. Now there's another detail in here. Before I start cutting anything else, there's another detail in here. They use, in their sample, they use vellum, but you can see I have that kind of a slightly darker wave band in there, thin band, and then there is this even darker gray band that's a little bit thicker. So they've cut a thin strip and a thicker strip that they will use as um, an accent piece. It's a little bit hard to see here because the um, sample is done with vellum. They wanted to give that illusion of those fish swimming in the water. So that was a great way to do it, right? To be able to use that vellum and just incorporate those fish look like they're, it gives a lot of depth to the, uh, the border. I am going to be um, using just a piece of decorative paper. Um, 
The paper I'm using is going to be the Moon and Stars um, from the Lullaby Lane collection. I love, I love how this has all those colors in it, the pinks, the blues, the moons, the nighttime theme to it, which really went well with my Moon and Stars border punch. However, it's, it's pretty dark. It's pretty dark, pretty heavy. I didn't want necessarily that much heaviness to it. So it's a great accent piece. I'll be able to come in with just some thin strips the, the, the thinner strip at the top and the slightly thicker strip at the bottom to give me a nice sense of depth of color without overwhelming, without making it feel heavy. This is a, um, a baby layout. I don't want it to be too heavy. I had a piece of scrap of it, so I'm not going to cut my, um, my full sheet here. I have a scrap. I actually cut the pieces yesterday to play around with this. Cause this, trust me, this one took me a little time to balance this out, but, um, so I'm kind of giving you that sped up version of my way too long thought process yesterday. So I need to cut some strips and I need to cut, the first strip I'm gonna do is gonna be fairly thin, maybe about a quarter of an inch. So I'm just centering this and lining it up a quarter of an inch past my cut line, a quarter of an inch to the right of my cut line. So that's gonna be my top piece. I could actually make it a little bit narrower if I wanted to. In fact, I'm going to. I'm going to cut it a little bit narrower. I think that quarter of an inch for how um, dark of a paper I have feels a little heavy. So we'll try a slightly thinner. It's probably closer to 3 16 of an inch. Just a little bit narrower. There we go. Yep, I like that better. This bottom piece, I am going to be, I'm going to push it. I don't know that I'm going to go a full half inch. I'm going to go slightly shot, slightly less than a half an inch. So I would recommend, you know, like I said, just shy of a quarter of an inch, maybe just shy of a half an inch. Actually, I think I'm going to go about three eighths. So just over a quarter of an inch. The biggest thing I want to see here is I want to see a definite difference between my top and my bottom. That's kind of a, a feature of this particular sketch that the top is thinner than this bottom piece. My pieces are the same pattern, same papers, but you could use two different papers if you wanted to. So, uh, but I definitely wanted to keep that. The top piece is thin. The bottom piece is a little thicker, a little more substantial. So now what I can do is I'm going to do that dry fitting. I need to be figuring out how wide I'm going to ultimately cut my wood piece. So now it's about fitting pieces into place. So trying the, the green and the blue on here, I think I'm going to offset. And when I say offset, what I'll do is when I actually adhere my pieces on, I will trim off. I can offset them and it's, uh, you have a hard time seeing on camera, but I have two stars. I have a green star hanging off this side and I have a blue star hanging off here. And what I will do is cut this piece off and adhere it over here. I'll cut this star off and adhere it to this side. And then when I put my middle star on, none of my patterns are going to line up. All right. They will all be just offset just a little bit from each other. And that's just going to make it so that it doesn't look so rep, um, repetitious. It just looks, you know, a little bit more random. So I don't need to worry about that really until I adhere things, but I'm just kind of putting it in place. Now this next piece, this bottom piece actually overlaps just a little bit on the bottom. So there it's starting to shape up a little bit. I can see, I'm starting to see it take place. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to figure out how wide is this? I like the placement. I like my spacing. I think everything looks good. Once again, I'm going to go back to my ruler, got my ruler here, 
And I am gonna hold things in place while I measure at this, the skinny end. So at the end where it's narrow, I am gonna measure. And the reason I'm measuring at this narrow end is because this is actually the part of the ruler it's gonna be the easiest for me to um, find. I'm just gonna go right up to the very, to the top, kind of the top edge there, and I'll be able to measure. And it looks like I'll be able to cut at two inches. So when I put this in my trimmer, I'm gonna make sure I measure over two inches and trim my swell edge. And that should, everything should all line up. So two inches is my key thing here. Depending on the borders you've used, maybe yours is a little narrower, maybe you're a little bit wider. So you're gonna to wanna to see where all those pieces are and then put your ruler in place to figure out, are you at, you know, are you under two inches? Are you over two inches? Uh, maybe you've only used a couple of pieces here, so you're narrower. Maybe you've got a much bigger pattern or a punched piece um, element here that you need a little bit more space. Maybe you cut this piece a little bit wider. Um, there's all sorts of reasons why your piece could be a different size. So that's why I, you know, I'm not, I'm building this and making my cuts only when I have to make my cuts. Let me, you know, measure, double check. I'm going to be at two inches here. So when making this cut, I need to make what I call an hourglass cut. So I don't want to cut like this because that's a parallel cut, right? I'm parallel to my original cut. You can see it here. See, I'd be parallel. I want to make an hourglass. So I need to flip either turn my, I need to just flip my paper around is what I need to do and feed this in. Now we can immediately see the problem. I don't have a measurement over here. I only come out to one inch. If I'm cutting this, you can see my hourglass shape taking place here, but I'm going to have to use my ruler to make this cut. So I'll bring my ruler in here. I've lined my paper up, bring my ruler in, push this out to two inches at the top. And I'm going to double check at the bottom. So I've measured at the bottom, double check at the top, measure twice, cut once. Looks pretty good. Go ahead and cut. All right. So again, I am still just dry fitting things. I'll glue things in place here in a little bit because now I have to make a decision on my background. And once again, this one took me a little while to figure out my background pieces, largely because I said I'm I don't, I wasn't working with a full packs of paper. I'd already made a couple projects that I was like, oh man, I use that paper already. So I was kind of having to make things work and I ended up, I really like it, but it took me a while to kind of fumble through some, what about this paper? What about that paper? So I like the process. I like the challenge of getting it figured out in that final result, but sometimes it can take a little bit. All right, so here's what I ended up with. Now, I really hemmed and hawed on what I was gonna do for a background. So I need to have a background piece that this is gonna sit on. And I thought, oh, well, I could do this wider, uh, this lighter background, it has this green pin dots. The opposite side is the darker blue hearts. And then I need to have a border at the top. Well, maybe, Oh, there it is. Maybe I could just not, you know, misplace all my papers. I could use the blue. And there's an option. And once again, coming back to what do I think I'm going to use this on? What kind of paper do I think I'm going to use as my background? So what if I was to carry this um, paper up here to the top? And, you know, I was like, oh, that looks kind of nice. That, that uh, wood tone carrying down into here. Um, I could have tried the uh, green color here. It wasn't quite working for me. One of the things um, I did determine here is um, I decided if I was gonna use the blue here that I would heat the blue down to this side. Um, you just kind of play around with it a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and adhere all of my pieces onto my wood swell cut and that'll let me make those final um, adjustments to the background pieces because I'm pretty certain I'm gonna be using, yeah, I'm gonna use the light. I want, I want as much contrast as I can get between the wood and this wider 
background is going to give me the most contrast between the wood and the background piece here. So let's put all these pieces into place. I've got some real thin strips here. So I'm going to use decorative or excuse me, repositionable adhesive. Now I'm going to layer in the last piece that's actually going to go on is my bold, my thicker strip. So I'm going to go ahead and put the blue and the green pieces into place first. As I said, slightly offsetting those. I'm going to offset to the left the green strip. trying to get this placed on here. This swell sometimes can make it interesting to, you know, to get this on straight. I should grab my cutting mat and my T-square. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to snip off this left edge that I overhung, and it's going to come over here and just attach to the right side to finish the pattern. It's kind of the little hack if you need to. It's You, you cannot border the border maker cartridges we can only really start in one place right when because we have our our paper holder that put puts everything in place for us when we use the blue and white border um, punches we can you know shift where we start the paper so it's easier to offset um, and do a complete border with the blue and white border punches where you can start wherever you want the border maker cartridges when you use the border maker system you're going to have to use this hack where you slide it off the paper chop off bring it back over to the opposite side and put it into place. A lot of times you'll be able to hide that seam really easy. Some of that depends on the paper though. It depends on the pattern of the paper. It also depends on whether or not you're layering other things in on top of it. And I am, so I knew that wasn't gonna be a problem. So I want to offset here. I've got him hanging over by a star. Looks good. Adhere that on this side. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and put this thicker swell piece at the bottom. It covers up the blue stars a little bit. However, I'm making sure that whatever edge I exposed at the top, I've also exposed at the bottom. So I have not quite an eighth of an inch. You just want to keep it even. And now I'll put my ivory moon and stars on the top in the middle. All right, so there you can see how that worked. Now I'm gonna back, I'm gonna put the, uh, the lighter white with green pin dots paper behind it. So once again, I need to measure. In the examples, um, it looked like they used a three inch strip. Nope, a two and three quarters inch. I wonder if mine's gonna be about the same. I need to go at this, for this one, I am going to measure at the thickest point, the widest point of my swell. And I'm going to be a little bit more than three inches. I'm actually going to come out probably two and three, about three and one eighth. So my overall border is going to be a little bit wider than theirs. So I'm going to come out to three and one eighth inch. Now I am going to use a decorative blade. They have that in their sample. I'm going to do that. I'm going to use the wave blade for mine. That may have been what they used as well. I think they did use the wave blade. So first I need to go ahead and establish that decorative edge.
and then I need to um, cut this to um, three and one eighth inch. I'm gonna maybe cheat just a little past three and an eighth. Since I've got that decorative edge on there, I'll give myself a little bit more space, just a tiny bit more. Three and an eighth. And I am going to use the blue border behind it, the blue, this muslin uh, blue to go behind it. Now, here's a little bit of a cheat. I'm gonna have to cut a lot of the blue, right, to get it behind there. I'm gonna, I would have to come out here like three and a half inches. Well, that's a lot. I don't mind the thick border, I think it's super cute, um, but it's a lot of blue that I'm gonna be hiding behind there. So my trick for that is to use a couple of strips. Instead of cutting all the way a full three and a quarter inch or three and a half inches, I'm gonna make some three quarter inch strips. I'm just gonna cut two of those. You could have, probably could have made them a half inch. And then what I'll be able to do is come in here and adhere those to the back of this paper. And I'm gonna do that with my mini tape runner. It's the red refill. Actually, I'm not because my mini is out and I have not um, gotten a new refill out yet. So I'm just gonna use some repositionable on the very edge. Normally I would have used my mini, but I'd have to go find where I put those all those refills. I um, cleaned my scrap space this weekend. And so as you know, when you clean your space, you have to remap in your mind where everything is. So there's one. So all I'm doing, you see, I'm just attaching those strips on the back. Instead of cutting that three and a half inch wide, I've just got some strips. It works great. This white piece here is giving me a good solid base for my border. This is gonna go on here, but before I go any further with this, I wanna, we're gonna pretend that I maybe, I am putting this on a piece of this um, wood um, piece. I wanna think about, you know, some of the embellishments and things that I would wanna include before I, because I've got some layers here. Maybe I'm gonna tuck some things in there, which is what I'm gonna do. So I've got this Sweet Dreams embellishment. I'm gonna tuck that in behind the swell. And the bear, I thought he was adorable. He can go over here as such. And then I've got the snoozing, the Z's that can come along here at the bottom too. So you can see there, I'm gonna bring, see if I can bring this in without it being too crazy. I can't lift that up because I don't have it. You can see there a little bit closer what that looks like. All right. So that is the, um, the two borders. Um, hopefully you guys had it, you know, gives you some inspiration, gives you some insight as to my, like I said, my crazy thought process. We'll put this up here, put this one down here, and you can get an idea of how things can look. Um, the, the Creative Memories doesn't always give us the sketches to go with the borders. So sometimes it can be a little challenging to imagine, you know, that we see a very specific example here. And sometimes it's hard to imagine how do I translate that into something else? So if you can start to look and see what those um, components are, you can see we've got a chain border or a border element that has a background behind it. We've got another border element here and you just really start playing. The decorative trimmer is always a great thing to work with here. Um, I love using it. I really am hoping and I need to send it into Creative Memory to tell them to give us more of these sketches. I had to dig a little bit to be able to find the sketches that match the borders, but I think it really is a fun way to play with tools. Um, was really nice. I didn't have to find photos to go with this as we were putting together. I know I'll use these borders, but I don't have to worry about, do I have the right photos right now? What size are the photos? How am I going to make the photos work? These are just general borders. These happen to be both horizontal borders. Um, maybe next time when we do, we'll work on doing some vertical or borders that don't have to be a certain um, uh, orientation. Sometimes with our border maker cartridges, we do have some that can go 
other ways. I'm not sure if I can, if I could mentally change my moon and stars to be going up vertical. Um, definitely the houses kind of need to stay right side up, maybe. I don't know. So anyway, that is, um, that's Scrapbook Live today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, had a chance to put some things together. Um, I apologize that my, my mind is a little crazy with things. Um, uh, things, you know, a lot of things go through my head when playing with this. So you got a little bit of a taste there. Um, I am thinking that we will do borders the last Wednesday of every month. So um, every week we'll have a scrapbook live. So for the next few weeks, we'll be putting together layouts. The last Wednesday of September, we will go back and we'll jump in and do some more borders so we can play with tools a little bit more. Um, in terms of other news to know about, remember right now we have a free shipping promo with Creative Memories. Um, if you are shopping online with Creative Memories, please shop with an advisor. Please support an advisor. So if you're working with somebody, fantastic. If you are not, if you're shopping directly with Creative Memories, you shop with me. That'd be fantastic. Um, but definitely make sure you are supporting an advisor. We are all um, small business owners trying to, um, you know, uh, do what we love, share the message of memory keeping. So um, the other thing I do want to um, highlight really quick, Croptoberfest stuff has come out. Tessa and I are doing two Croptoberfest classes. We have a Croptoberfest page makers class. We have six all new um, page layouts to create using the premium bundle from the um, Croptoberfest. And we also have a card class. Um, so greeting cards, 12 cl uh, cards from the Project Recipe Kit. We will be, um, it's 12 cards plus a page layout. So those are things coming up. You can find all that information on my Facebook page, on my YouTube, or excuse me, on my blog, um, the meganjacks.com. And I think I'll have a link also, if you're watching this on YouTube later, there's a link below to some of the classes um, that Tessa and I offer together. So anyway, that's all I have for now. I will see you guys next Wednesday. Have an enjoyable long weekend. If you're here in the US, if you're in another country and you guys celebrate something fun this weekend, have fun, enjoy yourself, make lots of fun memories. And I will see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.